All right, guys. We are here for our first streamed post combine big board. Let's do this thing. Right. First things first, if you don't know me, my name is Liam Murphy. I have over $1.3 million in best ball earnings, taking down three different best ball tournaments. I'm back from Vegas, still under the weather on antibiotics, so hoping that that will put me on the mend. Um, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps support me to encourage me to do more free drafts for you guys to follow um last on the channel had on davis maddock and pat crane to talk some rookies gonna see if i can get those guys uh on next week to talk through the combine i've been i've been following it loosely um i thought before i jumped into the big board lobby so if you're waiting to do that give me a moment i did this draft last night and it's gonna be kind of hard to see. Uh, I'm out of the three hole here. Justin Herzig was in the one hole. It's kind of funny because Justin earlier that day made a tweet saying how he was out on Anthony Richardson at 11th and 12th round, and then he took him in the 12th round. So had to ratio him. You know, J Justin, of course, a friend of mine, lives in St. Pete. But when you put out a tweet the same day saying you're out on Anthony Richardson, and then you take him in the 12th, you know, and amateur mistake. He's on the turn here. Should have taken. Alexander Madison in the 12th, Richardson in the 13th, would have been no issues. Um, anyways, a bunch of people thought my build was wild because I started with double elite quarterback, Hurts and Fields. I did six running backs, not five, and only 10 wide receivers. I think it's fine. Only did two tight ends with Goddard and Schultz. Um, you know, of my three top running backs, you know, uh, Gainwell's questionable, could be the starter, could not. And then ended with four rookies, which I like the sixth running back for 20 rounds. And all my wide receivers are touchdown guys in half point PPR. We're talking about the big bodied dudes, Gabe Davis, Darnell Mooney, Isaiah Hodgins, Claypool, MBS, Tyquan Thornton, uh, Bryce Ford Wheaton, maybe a DK Metcalf type. I've been shifting through the rookies, but anyways, I didn't think it was that crazy. Um, would much rather start Chase or Jefferson than CMC, but, you know, you can get some good picks. Anyways, what's going on, Nez? Guys, hit that subscribe button, and let's jump into the big board. Uh, I definitely have never been this uh wow look at you guys just waiting for me we're filled here i don't know if you guys are predicting this or if you guys are just dgens pulled the 107 though um i've never i've definitely never been this plugged into rookies at this time of the year uh you know i think unplugging is healthy for a bit but fuck it we're trying to win two hundred thousand dollars here Sun running the big board. So if Underdog's going to release these big contests, we're going to fire at it. If you're for some reason not on Underdog, my promo code is Chesleyum. Get a hundred dollar deposit match there. Um, it's only my seventh big board. Pulled the one hundred seven for the seventh for you number fiends out there. And I think uh, I think next week I'm going to try to do daily drafts. So check out my Twitter at Chesleyum. Also going to make a Discord here. I'm going to make a Discord because I get a lot of DMs from people who, frankly, I don't see all Twitter DMs. And, uh, you know, it would just be a better way to answer questions. 
And to get the real grinders, obviously my audience is not that big. I only have 1,400 subscribers, not even. Um, but we've won a lot of best ball contests. So. Paul, ripping the double elite tight end 4QB build. Yeah, I messed around with 4QB the past couple of years. 4 late. Not sure I love it this year with just the guys that are late right now, but that could change. Let's try to get me in frame. How's that sound? Uh, looking like the big three is pretty locked in. Some people get crazy, take a Kelsey there. Um, this time of the year is hard, man. It's It's hard. All right, let's look up our next big NFL dates. I think the next big dates we're waiting on are obvious. Obviously, the NFL draft is not for well over a month or two. Uh, oh yeah, we could take digs here pretty easily. Um, catching up on NFL rumors. Looking like Aaron Rodgers, per my guy, Crack Rock. Um, and what's up, fellow Liam? Liamception. Fun fact, my senior year of college, I lived with four dudes. Three of us were named Liam. How about that? Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Looking like Aaron Rodgers, per Crack Rock. Put out a funny tweet. People seem to like that. Crack Rock is one of our most trusted sources of NFL owners. Uh, he's saying that Rodgers to the Jets all but confirmed. Not really sure what this means for Devontae Adams. Perhaps the Raiders are going to get one of the rookies. Um, I would say most teams in the NFL got to feel good about either their current quarterback or the future of their quarterback, except for like if the Patriots roll out Mac Jones, I would say they are one I'm not optimistic about, but like even the commanders, if they're rolling with that rookie or the second year player now, Sam Howell optimism, um, any of the teams at the top of the draft, they get one of those Anthony Richardson, CJ Stroud, um, Bryce Young, optimism. If the Titans roll Tannehill, obviously that's not optimistic. Derek Carr to the Saints. I mean, are they going to win the division? Maybe easily. Uh, same with Ritter. I don't know how optimistic we would be about Ritter. Uh, all right. Well, don't got to twist my arm to start Josh Allen Diggs. That's for sure going to be a thing. Let's see you with 20 rounds also. Either stop at one or do one late. And really try to get numbers at some of the other positions. I would say there's definitely some names at the second and third round that are going to struggle to keep up with production. You know, like some names are just shoehorning in here. T. Higgins stands out, Derrick Henry. They could be like lapped by like an Amon Ra, by a Jalen Waddell, by elite quarterback plus whoever. Saquon, I definitely like him behind Bijan. But, I mean... Just hard to envision that Bijan's going to enter week one and just be like 20 points per game. I think he'll get there, but I don't know. How are you guys feeling about the current draft boards, the cost of players? There gets a point where you know, like wide receiver feels pretty deep currently. Uh, running back does too, but they definitely hit a wall at some point. Tight end, a lot of names to like for a while. Quarterback. Um, quarterback's hard. Like, I don't know how much Trevor Lawrence at pick 60 I'm going to have 
versus like a Lamar at 40. I want to be in on Trevor though, so I probably just will. But it's also like, why is Trevor pick 60 oh, and like Cousins and Tua's pick 100? And then like Gino and Goff's like in the 120s, in the Rodgers in the 120s. Like, seems like we're just kind of choosing names to fit with stacks, which is fine. But, you know, like Derek Carr will probably not be that outscored by Cousins unless he just goes crazy again. Very good point, AW. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I like I'm prone to be in on an Anthony Richardson if he gets the draft capital. I think people are learning the wrong lesson from Lance. They're like, I learned my lesson from Trey Lance. The fuck did you learn? The dude got hurt. I think the lesson of Trey Lance is he could have been Justin Fields. Um this feels very wrong. This is a tough spot, but I think with Jacobs returning and potentially them leaning more on the run game, I don't want to have a big Jacobs bag, but he feels good. Like I'd like Jacobs over ETN, probably like him over Nick Chubb and Derrick Henry. I like him equally to Stevenson and Pollard, though. But after that, it feels like a bit of a gap. Like, I like Swift a lot, but do the Lions? What's going on, Ron Navy? We got the board up here. Greg instant picks naked Joe Burrow. Also interesting by batch nine here to take the Chase Higgins and then not Joe Burrow. <coughs> In some sense, it makes sense if you're drafting with smart people that no one really should rip off a naked Burrow when you take Chase Higgins. So he should be able to get Burrow to fall all the way back to the fourth at some clip. However, not not on Greg's watch. I don't this doesn't make any sense to me. You're going to get hurt because you didn't produce in college. Miss me with that. I mean, this could be, this could just be me, but it could just be bad luck, dude. If the NFL values these guys, and generally a sharp franchise in the Niners, in the top five picks, don't think you should be out on them. This is a choose your adventure round, round four. Let's let's take a, a Ridley share. We've not taken him yet. Uh, great news to get the reinstatement so early on him, meaning we don't have to like draft a bag of this dude. I, I would much rather Ridley over D Hop. That's for sure. Calvin Ridley is 28. He will be 29 in December. The old, honestly, for a rookie. Uh, Hopkins is about to be 31 in June. Also, just kind of their body types. 
these bigger guys, sometimes we just see them fall off. Mike Williams just going to live in the fourth, too. Makes sense. This is definitely a round where some of these guys are going to fall on their face. Like, I do not believe the production will be flat between DJ Moore, Judy, Pittman, Ridley, Williams, Watson. It's like maybe Watson explodes, maybe Ridley explodes, maybe Judy sucks, maybe DJ Moore, meh. Or, like, different, like maybe Pittman explodes, maybe Williams sucks. Some of these names are definitely going to miss, though. I could see Hopkins as like a replacement for Schultz, seeing as they're going to let him walk, I believe. Oh, yeah, trying to get back to my NFL key dates. Let's just look at the list. All right. The combine just happened. The, fran the franchise and transition tag just happened. Pro days. Pro days is the big one right now where – a ton of these dudes, kind of annoyingly to me, did not run at the combine. Either they didn't do their agility drills or they didn't do their 40-yard dash. And yeah, it's probably smart for them to do this in situations where they are more comfortable. Um, however, it's just kind of annoying when we have the like running backs just did their weight, some of them. It's like, all right, really? Hmm. Tough part in the draft. Um, it's a Gibbs. Like, I think Smith Njigba is going to be going in the top 10. But if Gibbs is this like Camara s guy, it's a pretty good RB2 to have. And we already got two stars at wide receiver in theory. Some other names I considered there too. Um, but anyways, yeah. So going back to the key dates, the pro days will be over at the end of this month. And we need some of these numbers like, if Jackson Smith and the Jigba runs like a 4740, yikes. Um, same with some of these running backs. Like we just need these numbers. March, mid March, we get the legal temporary tampering period for like two days. March 15th, the new year begins. Which um so this this is all coming up. Uh, I get cut. But that owners meeting about that, and then we get the NFL draft on April seventeenth. When does free agency open, though? I think I missed a date. We'll make our pick real quick. Hmm. It's tempting to grab Trevor, but don't think I'm going to. And really, no, no one on the inside of the turn should because, uh, oh no, this guy took Kirk, so he's going to grab him, which is fine. He can have him. We'll take Hollywood. Guy I was big on last year. Dealt with a lot of injuries. Still elite. Uh, bad spot for him to be in. But he's only... 25. So no, it's not like Mike Evans who could be done. Um... Anyways, man, 
The NFL's got a lot of like bozo stuff here. I think free agency opens on March 15th in the new year. Yeah, March 15th. That's five days from now. Um, which is huge, you know. Once we see some of these moves, some of these teams doing free agency, we'll have a better idea of what some teams are going to do in the draft. Post-free agency is also when we're more likely to see some trades in the draft. Some teams might see who they can get and then go from there. Um, we're not helping Kyle. You could be in this draft with us. When do the NFL schedules come out? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's post-draft. Oh, it for sure is post-draft. May 12th. It's a good question, A.W. I want to have on some guests to talk through, some coordinators, try to get in the head of these coaches, see who wants to establish the run and who does not. You can get in trouble with this line of thinking too, though. Like, If Arthur Smith is like, I don't want to be fired, we're going to start throwing the ball, and now all his pass catchers start producing on the Falcons, it's like, well... Okay, so Gabe goes, no big deal. I think we'll take Bateman, who we have no talent questions on. Um, it's just the injury, plus maybe his quarterback situation could be questionable. But with us having four pretty star wideouts already, uh, like... Even if Bateman is whatever, still injured, which I don't see how that's even possible six months out from now. Um, pretty solid core, though. Bateman is really turning on until Tyler Algier is another name I considered. Just, see, just seems like Tyler Algier uh, has a really low floor where. I mean, he was very good last year. However, he was taken in like the fifth round. And the Falcons don't strike me as this genius team who's like, well, we got our running back in the fifth. Let's focus elsewhere. They could totally be like, all right, Patterson's aging. We need Gibbs or we need Bijan or we need whatever. Um, and then Algier becomes the RB2. And potentially a distant one, depending on who they get. We'll get back to the chess eventually. We're going to be doing some fantasy football. I'm in the mood. Let's see. So Trevor went to a naked team. I mean, guys, you should just not do this. Like, what is your plan with Naked Burrow or Naked Trevor? And yes, you can backstack them with some players. I get that. When you don't, though, it's pretty disastrous for for this size field. By the way, if you're watching and you're not chatting... It's because you need to smash that subscribe button. We got subscribers only chat on. What up, gang? Help me get to 1,400. What's the deal with Kamara? Do we know if he's playing or not? Um, I'm going to take Evan Ingram there. We have Ridley and Ingram, but I don't mind doing that without Trevor, where... I mean, Ing I mean, we know Ridley is a good if he plays. And 
Ingram is looking like he's like a top five tight end who for some reason just goes a couple rounds after and plays for a pass first quarterback where these two do not. Yeah, I don't know why you would not believe in Christian Watson. All he did was ball. Also, do to make me money, like, going to be back in on them. Christian Watson was a guy I just kept on drafting last year when all the geniuses were like, mm, he's too athletic. I was like, all right, I like this dude. He got really cheap on DraftKings, too. <coughs> Woo. Really hoping these antibiotics got me feeling 100% soon. Not sure what to think about this wide receiver rookie class. I've always been of the mindset that athletes are better and better entering the NFL, but there is some potential that we were in a bubble. Darren Waller's a name I like too. Philip rocking the naked Trevor and the naked Tua. Gotta make sure you get your QB points locked up, uncorrelated. It's a weird range in the draft where some of these dudes are going to smash and some are going to suck. We're going to grab Trey, though. Just because I don't love the other names. And whether Trey does or doesn't play, I mean, obviously... If he does play, and he could be like, I don't know, 85% of fields. Great pick in the ninth. Rocking Josh and Trey. If he doesn't play, doesn't really matter. We just, we still got, if not the quarterback one in fantasy, a top three minimum, if healthy. Um, and so it's a swing for upside. And it's like, yeah, okay. I would have taken Charbonnet, by the way. I think he had a good combine. But, like, I, I was probably going to take Nujoku next, which is, like, I could find another tight end. Brian Robinson, there's probably, like, 50 names that are similar to him right now. Um, Darnell Mooney. Yeah, I want to be in on Mooney, but you got to think the Bears are going to add some pass catchers there. Trey Lance versus Daniel Jones. Like, Daniel Jones is just a safety swing to me. Hard to say, Ross, until we have the NFL draft. Y'all are fiending. Y'all are asking questions very early. It is March 10th. Um, I, I don't think situations like that play out until post-NFL draft. But it's going to be interesting just seeing that, you know, like, yeah, I think everyone was drafting last year and years past for these big boards and stuff, but I really wasn't. Like, I would do, like, five. I was not streaming any for these 50K to first contests. But 200K to first? All right. Now we're plugged in. Definitely going to need to take some breaks, though, uh, so that I'm not burnt out once it once it launches. However, this year I'm going to be I'm going to be out of um, pick one fourteen. We're just gonna grab Knox here. Um, which by ADP, he's supposed to make it back to me. However, this guy seemed very earnest to just like jam Gabe Davis on me. 
one pick before. So we're not going to give them the opportunity. And we'll just let them whiff out on some bad picks and get some value back to me. And we're stacking with uh, our QB1. And I like Knox's ability to not only be exactly what he was last year, which is just a touchdown guy in an offense that scores a lot of touchdowns, or potentially take that next step. Um, oh yeah, I'm going to be in Vegas for all of June and part of July. So that means that where last year I, I didn't do as much. I think I maybe like did two two weeks less. And so um, this means that I'm going to have to jam all my best balls into before Vegas and then after. So going to be a forced barbell. And hopefully we'll win a bracelet in between that to go with our championship ring. Dalton Schultz, like, where's he going to land? You know, does it? He does really seem like a byproduct of like Dak, unless he goes to like a good team. You know, but like if Schultz goes to I don't know the Bears, and they're running out Komet and Schultz, that's a big hit to his value. Fryermuth obviously is like a chalky good pick, but he's still got target comp. So does Knox, but seems like a lot of the quarterbacks are going this round. Let's see. Did so the one hole Fendi plays got the Rogers to Brees Hall stack potentially. Michael Thomas, hard to say about him. How did Downs do at the Combine? I think he did not great. I think we'll take Gainwell, which is a swing for pretty big upside at this point in the offseason in round 11. Drawing live to be the Eagles RB1. Yeah, down to around a 4 4 8. I'm really not sure, Ron, about. Ron asked, what do you think underdog will increase? Best ball mania for entries to and top prize to. Um, I I would be shocked if they change the entry fee at all. So I'm guess it's going to be twenty five dollars again. Was it, I'm pretty sure it's been that every year they've ran best ball mania. However, they've stated their stated goal is to not make contests so top heavy. So I wouldn't be surprised if they did something which would be a little disappointing to me personally if they only did like 2.5 million to first. Um, Cause I think they like a couple of the guys have just said that like they, that's around the max they could do for contest size. So, I mean, they have the million to the regular season, which they can play with like that. They could just chalk that up and make it three mil to first, but I don't think we're going to get this like five mil to first contest, unfortunately. And if you make the entry fee more than $25, you might just not get the entrance. You know, if you make this thing like 50 bucks, less people may just uh, enter. It's a weird range in the draft where like some of these guys are going to do fine. Some of these guys are going to suck. Like Sky Moore could smash, could suck. Wandale, 
hard to see a huge ceiling, just the body type. But uh, it feels like a safe pick. Gibson's a pretty good swing upside. Osborne, I like. Palmer, I just, you know, I don't know. He needs the injuries. Whoa, Devin a chain. I don't even think he had a good combine, but Greg says, fuck it. So we're very flexible at this point. We can go one of many... Positions. How many did you score last year? 175. I don't know what's going on with my internet, so we're taking we're panic taking Zeke. Who you know, like, let's say he sees, like, a 25% reduction in points. I'd bring him into, like, the 130s range. He scored 12 touchdowns last year. Um, it's just, you know, like, the wide receivers around here. We're not inspiring. And I was trying to look up Sean Tucker's combine, but looks like I don't think we got any numbers. Yeah, no, no numbers. So we're at this weird point where we have like no info on a lot of these guys. And I'm of the mindset that if you don't run, you think you're slow. Like Zeke versus Madison, I think I'll take Zeke there. Especially with them like only 27. So it could be a total zero, but he, uh, especially with Mike McCarthy. Like firing Kellen Moore for no reason. Uh, yes, Paul. Pretty much right after the draft, but you'll have that info. Like draft finishes, this contest ends. BBM four in your face. I like Alec Pierce potentially being better in his second year with a better quarterback, new coach. Anthony Richardson goes in round 13 in this draft, so pretty late. Um... We'll take Higby, I mean, Taysom Hill, and be done at tight end. Look, I don't want underdog to keep listing him as a tight end. You don't want underdog to keep listing him as a tight end. But as long as he's listed as a tight end, we are going to be drafting him. Uh, and now we're done at tight end with a fun group, honestly. Three swings at upside. Like maybe Ingram's production's hurt a little bit by Ridley addition, or maybe it's helped. Taysom Hill, I believe Dennis Allen came out and said 
He is going to be a big part of our offense, an even bigger role this year. So we'll see. I would not mind at all if he was taken away from tight end eligible, though. Let's look at some of these names that went around him, though. Cole Komet. Do we think Cole Komet outscored Taysom Hill? No shot. Higby. Not even close. Hill was in the 140s. So we definitely need to get some wideouts on this team. A couple names went that I would have taken, so we'll see how bad it gets. Not a wideout, Leonard Fournette. If Fat Lenny does it to me, he does it to me. All right, we'll take Samuel. Didn't have a great finish this season, but... Was the Debo Samuel before Debo was? 145 points last year. Only four touchdowns. One on the ground. Room to go up. Booty, I heard I had a terrible combine. Probably why he's being passed on. OBJ. I'll probably be in on OBJ. Yeah, Booty ran a four five. Which I don't I don't understand why that I mean that's not like a death now. One five eight ten yard split, that's not uh great. In comparison, Curtis Samuels, Raz. And a 4 3 one, 40, one five, five, 10 yard. I mean the one maybe the one five eight ten is not terrible. It's like his long speed is slow, but his ten yard is not as bad. Let's look up another player's DJ Shark Raz. Shark ran a one five one ten yard, but he's a speedster. He's gone, so. Let's look at these hyphenated names. Claypool only ran a 156 10 yard, 4 4 2 We're going to take Roshan Johnson. I think I can make wide receiver work, but pretty sure Roshan, who was the backup to Dijon Robinson, he had a good combine. Six foot, two twenty. Four five eight forty one five two ten yard split. So that models to like a guy who could be full down roll. 
And I would have taken some of these names like Tyquan Thornton, but it's like <laughs> most likely a touchdown or bus guy. Why does the combine matter so much? Um, because some of these prospects who people like, like there are bare minimum numbers to play in the NFL, right? Like you can like a guy all you want, but if he runs a five second 40, pretty clear out on that dude. Or if a small fast guy turns out to be not that fast, any small, out on him. I'm in on Davis. Uh, not as many wideouts went, but we'll just take the Shakir stack. Definitely could be relegated to wide receiver four. Also live to remain at wide receiver three. Maybe even two. I thought he was good last year. Here you go. DKB saying they announced all of Best Ball Mania three details on the day of the draft with Josh and Hayden's stream. Yeah, I mean, I'm in on Gabe. I think he was injured last year. I think he's still a touchdown guy on a good offense. Um, definitely has a lower floor at this point in the offseason, though, if he, you know, like, I don't know, if the Bills trade for Mike Evans and Chris Godwin or something. Okay, Davis is probably wide receiver four. Or if they trade for Chris Godwin and draft Jackson Smith Nijibit Nijibga or whatever. Okay, maybe Davis is rele relegated, but until we know that, uh for the big board at least, I'm gonna be gambling on him. There's a lot of names to like around him though, so it's hard to get like a huge bag on Davis because I like quite a bit of players going around his ADP. Some I like way less, but some I like pretty equally. So what do we got so far? We got 2563. Um... With one, two, three, four more picks, which I might go two and two, two minimum at wide receiver for sure. I wouldn't hate that. Two, seven, eight, three. Hard when you need to start three wide receivers and like two of them are Curtis Samuel and Khalil Shakir. I thought Hubbard looked good last year. I just panicked there and just threw in a random rookie I thought of. Because I couldn't think of the wide receiver I wanted to take. Um... Hubbard, not a dude. Like, I'd rather probably roll some dice on some rookies there. But he's going to be on the Panthers. Uh, AW, I was doing four tight end before Dan Zach brought it up. I've been doing the weird structures for a long time. But yeah, I did I did a lot of four tight end last year. It wasn't because anything a Dan said though. I actually disagreed with quite a bit Dan said. But uh we approach things differently. Yeah, I mean I think at, at least a 10 second pick timer would be nice. 
Don't think they're going to do it, but. Obviously easier to rip four tight end in uh, 20 rounds. It's also, it was, it was like very draft dependent. Like when you do, when you rip four tight ends and that means you're capturing two years ago, some of Gronk, some of Dalton Schultz, some of Dawson Knox, like, of course that's going well for you. What's the deal with Rasheed Rice? I don't know anything about this guy. Okay, welcome to the team. Four five one forty. It's got small hands. One four nine ten yard. Six one. The thing about small hands is, um, this is why Christian Watson was impressive. Is like, dude's got ten inch hands. The thing about small hands is I think it correlates a little bit with dropping the ball. Yeah, I mean, why would they consider it? Faster pick clock in general means players spend less time in the app, probably. And it's not like it helps the product perform better, and it's only really catering to the hard course. You know, if you're some casual dude, 30 seconds is probably fast for you. Definitely feels like... The market I'm gonna wait until it's my pick to say this. Oh wow, Broncos released Chase Edmonds. What a fall from grace for him. Ronald Darby released by the Broncos. Looks like we're about to get a bunch of NFL news. Corey Davis could be like a very high upside pick or could be cut. So people are getting their tight ends. Anyways, so as I was trying to say, definitely feels like people are not uh, into, like they just don't know much about the rookies at this point, which makes a lot of sense, like who could? And they're just kind of like shoestringing in rando vets, which I would argue like Chubba Hubbard kind of is like that. Just like, okay, random vet here. Michael Carter, random vet. Isaiah McKenzie, random vet. Darius Slayton, random vet. And it's like CH, random vet. Like some of these guys are just holding name brand because you know their names versus like, okay, I rolled the dice on Bryce Ford Wheaton. Don't really know jack shit about him other than he's kind of athletically like DK Metcalf. So... If he does end up becoming DK, smash. If he flames out, all right, cool. I missed, I missed on a round 19 pick. Like, we know who Van Jefferson is. Doesn't mean he can't have a usable week. But we know he's never going to be 
some like elite guy in the NFL. Yeah, late round tight end, always viable. What's going on, the pound? Don't know what this is in reference to, but. Tom Brady. Wow. Wow. Go away, Tom Brady. Try to go back, get back your family, dude. St stage six of of grief is drafting Tom Brady in round twenty in March. Um. All right, Evan Hall tested well. Don't know anything about him. Bringing us a two seven eight three. With Josh Allen and Trey Lance, Josh Jacobs, Jameer Gibbs, Gainwell. These are our three highest upside running backs, probably. Zeke, who you're just kind of hoping falls in the end zone at least six times. Roshan Johnson, rookie, Chubba Hubbard, that pick was whatever. Could be a starter, or at least a 1B. Uh, Evan Hull, rookie. Our eight wide receivers are Diggs, Ridley, Marquise Brown, Bateman. Those are our big four. And then we roll the dice with Curtis Samuel, Khalil Shakir, Rasheed Rice, and Bryce Ford Wheaton. This four, you know, you're you're hoping for one, ideally two, to hit. Um, ideally all four are playing, at least. And then our three tight ends are Ingram, Knox, and Taysom Hill. That is going to be <laughs> why are you asking about Russell Gage? <clears throat> That's gonna be it for me, guys. I need to get water and shit and food. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, drop a comment in the YouTube. It really helps me out. Let's name this 310 draft seven. Three ten draft number seven. Naming these so that when I can look back later, I'm just kind of I'll be able to roughly chart like, all right, my early drafts suck or my late drafts suck or whatever. Um, we'll be back next week with a bunch of streams, maybe some guest streams. You can catch it all here. My Twitter is at Chesleyum. Going to launch a Discord soon too. Any questions, drop it in the YouTube comments. Peace, guys. Have a great weekend.